Hello and welcome to Old Felixstowe and to the cliffs overlooking the dip. Today I'm on the hunt for a Roman fort which was built to protect the mouth of the River Deben and also Harwich Harbour from invaders and smugglers. And it's just over there. Except of course it's nowhere to be seen. It collapsed long ago into the sea due to cliff erosion. All that remains of it is some fallen seaweed covered masonry which is exposed in the right low tide and weather conditions. The fort was built in the 3rd century by the Romans and it was one of a series that was built around the coast in order to protect from invasion. It was a classic Roman fort as these pictures drawn in 1623 show. It was known locally as Walton Castle as Walton was the largest significant settlement in the area until the 19th century. Much of its history is surrounded in mystery. It was still fortified in Saxon times and was thought to have been the site of a famous settlement called Domok or Dunmark, which housed a large Minster church. However, many other historians think that, in fact, Domok was actually Dunwich, which is just up the coast here and has also been victim to coastal erosion. During the Middle Ages, the castle was fortified by the Bygod family, the Earls of Norfolk, who fell out with King Henry II, and as a result, the castle was confiscated by the Crown. Henry demolished much of its fortifications in 1176, but it seems the Roman wall survived until the castle finally collapsed into the sea in the mid-18th century. So what did Walton Castle actually look like? Well, to give us some idea, we need to go up the coast to another Roman sea fort which has survived, and that's Burr Castle in Norfolk. It's much bigger than Walton Castle, but its ruins bear a striking resemblance. These castles were built as strongholds, places that were intended to be seats of military power that were there to ensure that Roman rule was maintained and made it difficult for invaders to gain a foothold. But Walton Castle was no match for the power of the sea. It reminds me of some verses in the Bible written by the Apostle Paul which say this. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Paul often uses military language to describe the struggle that Christians face as they walk through life. Both opposition from the world and also from spiritual forces. In this example he deals with the issue of what he calls strongholds which are things that take our mind off God and walking in obedience to Christ. They are usually ways of thinking, prejudices, ideas that don't have any grounding in God or in fact, or they can just be things that niggle away at us such as doubt, disappointment or unforgiveness, or just be habits and addictions we can't seem to escape from. All these are things that get in the way of how we walk with Jesus. In fact, they keep people from coming to faith in the first place. But this is a story of hope because God has given us some weapons in order to counteract these strongholds in our minds. If you look in Ephesians 6, you'll find that we have two weapons to deal with these strongholds. Take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. The first weapon is the Word of God. God speaks to us through his written word, the Bible, and also by his Spirit. And it's the Spirit that helps us to understand and follow Jesus in the way that we should. So allow God, the Holy Spirit, to speak to you. The second weapon is prayer. God wants us to talk to him. Pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. So ask somebody to pray with you that the Holy Spirit will break down the strongholds in your mind and in your life. 
So here's the challenge of Walton Castle. It isn't here anymore because it faced a force far more powerful than anything human beings could throw at it. As God's people, we have the Holy Spirit in us and he can break down all those thoughts and all those arguments that keep us from following Jesus in the way that we should so that we can know more of his presence and his power in our lives. If you don't know Jesus yet, then ask God to break down whatever doubts and fears you have to realise that Jesus died for you as he so much wants us to have the blessings that come through following him. Thanks for listening and may God bless you.